Weather charms, come and get them. You know you need them. Whether or not, yes or no, sort your data, get in the flow. The charm seller had set up her stall in her usual spot next to the data laundrette and was doing brisk business with its patrons. A small counter folded out from her scooter and she stood behind it, hand on hip, dishing out small squares of rainbow-hued flimsy that fluttered in the chilly breeze. Her red, frizzy hair framed her face. Tom picked out a charm and swapped it for a sheet of freshly cut biomaze, hot off the printer at his studio. He watched the charm seller break off a corner to taste and test. He knew it was a good batch and a fair exchange, but still he stood there for a moment longer than necessary, reluctant to leave and trying to work out if her nod of approval was about more than just the biomaze. He racked his brains for something, anything to say. He didn't even know her name. She carried on calling out her wares and, overcome with shyness, he ducked into the laundrette. Tom loved the data laundrette. It had a retro interface that had been crafted by a real obsessive who took the whole skewer morph very seriously. Tom pulled on his goggles and gloves and tipped out a jumble of data from his rucksack the data spooled onto the floor in big loops of ones and zeros that shone purple and green, subliming at the tips into wreaths of hazy smoke. None of it legal, all of it grubby, corrupted and at least 20 years old, going back to the golden age of tagging a go-go when you couldn't blink without it being recorded. Rubbish! but valuable if he could just sift out the duplicates, rebuild the record, then correlate the bias. A big if. The crescendo of a 1200 spin cycle thudded in the background as he chucked the data into a washing machine, threw in the weather charm flimsy, pushed in an old Bitcoin token and crossed his fingers. Hunkered down by the tumble dryers, cocooned from the outside world, Tom felt himself relax for the first time in days. Watching the data go round was a soothing weekly ritual that, yielded a, that often yielded a nugget of material he could use for a training set. Between college, where he was in his second year studying print gardening and horticulture, Juggling his printer access at the studio he shared with his cousin, his neighbour and too many other students from his year, looking after his old mum and trying to keep the ancient neural net he'd inherited from his aunt going, Tom didn't have a moment to breathe, but here he could. And as usual, his thoughts turned to the charm seller. Had she noticed him? He needed more than a sheet of biomaze to stand out from the crowd, no matter how tasty it was. He had to talk to her, and somehow in his mind's eye, the only thing to see was a frizz of red hair framing an elfin face. Which is why he didn't notice the data loops spooling round his feet until they switched from solid state deliquescing and soaking through the hole in his left trainer. He squelched over to the faulty washing machine he was using and called up customer services at the post-reality service provider by shouting out the back. Tom bent over the machine as more water spilled out from the front. It seemed as if the door was partly open, though the wash cycle was still running. He reached down, fingers tingling as he got near the door. Don't touch that, a disembodied voice shouted. 
Tom stepped back, stifling a yelp as the laundrette lurched around him and he saw the menu Faber at work, hunched in the corner and shrouded in a moth-eaten tartan rug, typing away at an ancient keyboard, muttering as they adjusted the code. I need to tidy up that machine. Things aren't quite what they seem in there, but right now I'm just going to do this. Perception filters. You need to care less about some things, Tom, and more about others, mate. You really do. Tom stood blinking in the gloom of a room that seemed to be beyond the end of the laundrette. A tattered poster on the wall advised, for woolies, switch to warm or delicate fabrics. What did the menu Faber know about what he really needed to care about? Tom stammered, I really love your work. The tumble dryers are amazing. Then felt like a fool for not being more cool about the interface. The menu Faber carried on typing. Tom looked down at the floor and the pools of soapy water spreading beneath his feet and noticed a small white stone, holes worn through it where the sea had washed it away. He bent down, picked it up, and the stone felt heavy in his hand. As he held it, the white of the stone rose around him. Its sides curved over his head, and he was in the middle, turned inside out, the sound of the waves in his ears rinsing thoughts from his head. He ran one way, then another, then hugged the porous chalk, reaching for a handhold to haul himself up, there wasn't one. The stone walls beneath his fingertips were smoothed by the sea. Hey, he shouted, where's the way out? Walk on the water, the menu Faber called to him. The smell of sea spray and the bite of salt in his mouth. He was being rolled around in the stone and then he held onto the lip of the last curve and swung himself out, legs telescoping below him to walk on the sea. He braced himself to fall headfirst into the ocean swell, but his feet touched the surface of the water instead. The waves rose up to meet him, and he splashed through them as if they were puddles swaying in the tide. The foam of the sea smelt of soap suds. Then Tom felt the familiar warmth of the tumble dryers wrap around him and the beep of the program ending. Shaking, he grabbed the stone and put it in his pocket, pulled the data from the washing machine and stuffed it, still wet, in his bag, tearing off his goggles and gloves as he legged it, suddenly sure of what he needed to do. Outside the laundrette, the sky had darkened. He saw the charm seller had called it a day and was packing up now the punters were fewer and further between. This time of year, the nights were long, and cold, and she seemed eager to be off, moving at speed. Tom seized his moment just as she was kicking her scooter off its stand. He ran up to her. I got you this, he said, handing her the small white stone. Her fingers curled round it, and she looked straight up at him and smiled. <laughs>